my water just broke. I felt like things really intensified. She was right there and she was coming. It was, it was an amazing feeling. I'm gonna cry just thinking about it. I could feel her head. We heard her cry. We were squeezing hands and she was screaming. <laughs> I'm Bryn Hunt Palmer and you're listening to The Birth Hour. This podcast is designed as a safe place for women to come together to share their childbirth stories. Stick around and join us to hear informative and empowering birth journeys from women all over the world. Today's episode is a rebroadcast of an episode that originally aired in 2017 with Christine McNabb. Christine had three girls and then found out she was pregnant with a boy, and the idea of raising a black boy in America caused her extreme anxiety and depression throughout pregnancy and postpartum. She shares her experience and how that affected her bonding with her son and how she overcame it and how she's helping women today. I also wanted to share with you guys a resource that I've been listening to over the last couple of weeks called Natal. It's a podcast docu-series all about having a baby while black in the United States. It's really well produced and dives into the history of giving birth while black and also shares birth stories from people today. You can find that at natalstories.com or just search for Natal Podcast in your podcast app. All right, let's hear Christine's story. Hi, Christine. Welcome to the birth hour. Thanks for being here today. Thank you, Bryn. Can you start by telling listeners a little bit about you and your family? Yes, I have four children, um, three girls and one boy, and I'm married to a fantastic man named Brandon. Great. And I know that you mostly want to focus on your most recent birth story and postpartum experience. So why don't we start with finding out you are pregnant um, with your most recent, your son? The day I found out that I was pregnant with my son, um, I was very shocked and surprised. And when I went to go tell my husband that I was pregnant, he was super excited. And I was like, really? How can you be excited? Because we are not prepared for another child in this house. I wanted him to curse. I wanted him to scream. But he did none of that. He was super excited and happy that we were pregnant. So um, why don't you just give a little bit of uh, background on what your first three births were like, because I think that kind of probably affects what your fourth one was going to be like. Yes. Yeah, so our three children before, they were all C-sections and two years apart, and I was exhausted. I was at home already with the three girls, and I wasn't prepared for the fourth. Uh, with C-sections, they are traumatic. Uh, I never liked them. Um, The first one was an emergency C-section, so it had to be done. And then the other two were repeat C-sections. But every time I could remember me walking into the operating room and my husband outside the door until he was allowed in, and it just was terrifying for me. And I really wasn't ready to go through that process again. So how did you feel throughout your pregnancy with your son? Um, Actually, so... After I got over the shock, I was okay. Um, I began to embrace it. And then um, when we found out what we were having, when I found out I was having a boy, the day my husband was super excited because he always wanted a boy, he started talking about matching socks and clothes and outfits and him going on golf trips with our boy. But then I was in a different state. I became sad. I was really sad to find out that we were having a boy because during the time that we found out was a lot of time was during the time that a lot of shootings were happening of black boys. And I was worried that my son would be a statistic. Mm -hmm. So did you find anything to kind of support you through that? Or did you really struggle through the whole pregnancy emotionally? I honestly struggled through the entire pregnancy emotionally. I tried to explain to different people how I was feeling. Um, People were saying, oh, well, as long as you raise him right, he'll be fine. And I was like, no, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how I raise him because he'll still be a black boy. And he'll be a tall and he'll be a big black boy based on my, my family's history. And I was just afraid of the future for him. And no one was no one seemed to get what I was trying to say. Were you able to talk to your husband about it? Yes, I spoke to him about it, and um, he understood, and he said he got it because he he was a he's a black man, and right. he um, 
he was saying like this is what he lives every day and I said I get it but now it affects me because this is going to be my child coming out of my body and I'm going to be raising him and now I have that fear in my heart about what the world will see in him and what the world will think of him so going into the end of your pregnancy planning your birth were you planning for another cesarean yes it was um going to be another repeat cesarean and um I was still highly stressed throughout the entire pregnancy, but I continued to do the best I could for my body, for my baby, and for my other children as well. But the thought kept coming to my head over and over again, and the worry kept coming there uh, about having a black son. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go ahead and get into your birth story, because I know you want to share a lot about postpartum as well. So um, let's talk about the day that he was born. So the day he was born, it was very interesting. It was We started off early in the morning, and the same thing happened. I had to walk into the operating room, and uh, getting the epidural was actually um, the worst epidural experience for me because I could not stop shaking. All the anxiety and everything. I remember the late, like, two people had to hold me to stop shaking to try to get the epidural done. My body, it just, I could not relax. I couldn't calm down because here I am about to have this fourth child. Um, When baby Brandon was delivered, um, my goal was to stay awake. That's been my goal for the last two children that I had to stay awake during the time. I was able to stay awake. And um, he was out and not really knowing how long I was in there, um, but he was out for over an hour before I was able to hold him because I had so much scar tissue. So they, my doctors had a hard time after delivery, like cleaning up the scar tissue and everything to close me back. So by the time I saw him, he was fine. Uh, he was with my husband and, and the nurses, but I was exhausted and I was sad. I was sad because I wasn't able to see him or hold him right away. And I was just, the nervousness was still there knowing that a black, another black boy has entered the world. So we were in the hospital for a few days, like any mom who had a cesarean. There were no complications or anything. And after we came home, reality hit. It was just me against the world, me and this newborn baby that I had to take care of, plus the other three children. And plus we're in a city where we don't have any family. My mom had left soon after the baby was born. My mother-in-law came into town and she was here for a little while. Um, But I just felt so lonely. I didn't know what to do. I was sad. I was in the house. I would rather clean than hold my baby. I would rather um, sleep or hide than hold my baby. I I didn't know what to do because I was just so afraid of the world of what was going to happen with him. I was afraid that I would hurt him. I was feeling disconnected from everybody, my husband, my other three children, and the baby. I no longer wanted to be there. I no longer wanted to be a mom. I no longer wanted to be in our circumstance, and I did not know how to handle it. So it was it was pretty tough, and days, weeks, months went by, and I was still just doing routine things. Actually, I actually did more than I was supposed to. I, I um, was cleaning up so much. Um, that was my out. I did not want to hold the baby, so I would clean up. But I was cleaning up so much that my incision got infected. So here I am back at the hospital again to to get my incision fixed and get on antibiotics. And I still did not slow down. That was supposed to make me slow down. That still did not make me slow down. Um, I hated nursing because, I mean, I had to sit and hold my baby. And I did not know how to relax and enjoy the time holding him. Um, so I can I nursed him really fast and put him down and then I would get back to cleaning or doing something else just to disconnect from my every day. Uh, a few months into he was about three months old and I said to my I was in my bathroom and I was crying. I just couldn't I was I could not take it anymore. I was crying, I was throwing things and I my husband found me upstairs in our bathroom. And he was like, what's going on? And I told him that I can't do this anymore. I told him I was leaving. I told him that um, he and our children are better off without me. And he had no idea. He was like, what are you talking about? I said, I can't do this. You deserve better than what I can give you. So I'm leaving. And he was like, where are you going? I said, I don't know. I'm going to drive and I'm going to keep driving or I'm going to get on a plane and go somewhere, but I'm not coming back. He held me 
and he he was in shock. We were crying. Um, he was very upset about what he was hearing. But it was my re- my reality at that moment. I could not shake it. I could not get out of it. So we went to go see my doctor, made an appointment, um, got the first appointment available. And I got there. I did not know what to say. But so she closed the door and she came, sat down next to me in the doctor's office and she said, what's going on? And I said, something's wrong. And we sat there for an hour and it was the best hour. I, I would always remember that her name is Dr. Band and she sat there and she talked to me and she made me feel normal. She made me realize that I am okay. There was nothing wrong with me. This is just what's going on with me. So we talked through everything. Was this your OB or just a yes. family doctor? Okay. No, this is my OB okay. because I trusted her. She was mm-hmm. there the entire pregnancy and I trusted her. We talked about the process and she said, you don't have to take medication, but these are the options. And this is what medication has done for me, has done for other patients. You know, let's weigh out the options. But we all I know is that we need to get better. We don't need you to be like this. Your family needs you. Your husband needs you. You're going to get better. So... From that conversation, I chose to take medicine because I did not like the way I was feeling. I didn't like any of it. And um, from that conversation and the medicine that I started taking, I started feeling like Christine again. Um, So now um, days are still not the best. I'm still not there 100 percent, but I am much better than I was before I started talking about it, before I started taking the medication that I'm on. And I appreciate her just listening to me. And from that, I have started talking to other moms about postpartum or about getting through it. And people have been so grateful that I'm talking about it because people don't talk about it. And I'm trying to make it normal, the conversation normal, because we don't need to lose another mom to postpartum or another baby to postpartum depression or psychosis. So what was the process like, like once you got on the meds, can you just kind of talk about how you started feeling immediately, like what changed over time, just kind of what people can expect once they do seek help? So once I started taking the medicine, it took a few days, uh, maybe a a week or so for me to notice changes. But the biggest change was that I was able to get up in the morning and start my day without the extra push. I was able to interact with my children. I was able to see things a lot clearer and be able to process all of it uh, a lot better. And it wasn't as hard as it was before. And what other things were you doing like in conjunction with the medicine to help you kind of feel better? So actually, I started meditating. Meditation was really good for me. I started walking meditations here in New Orleans. I also use a tip that my doctors gave me when it came to nursing, go to an area that was just mine, like so I wouldn't have to look at the mess in my life and the chaos. So it was just my nursing area and I, it was all things good around me that I would like to look at. And that actually helped a lot because now I'm sitting there nursing for an 45 minutes or an hour and I'm looking at things that I that I enjoy instead of looking at the chaos of our house. And that really helped me as well. Yeah, I feel like I hear that that's really important a lot for moms who, especially after you have more than one kid and like everything is just taken over by them to have just one space that's not is really key. Yes, that's very important. And then the other thing I started doing was riding my bike. I started getting up early in the morning um, before everyone would wake up uh, and before my husband had to leave for work and I would go out for a bike ride. Um, We live by a levee and so Mm -hmm. I ride the bike on the lake for about an hour in the morning just so I can breathe and start my day without the hustle and bustle of life. And that really helped me as well. What was this experience like for your husband? Just, I mean, going from you saying you wanted to leave and they were better off without you to kind of helping you get through it. He was very strong through it. He um, he processes things a lot differently than I do. Um, but he was able to just be there for me and listen to me. He didn't understand completely 
of how I was feeling because he didn't see it. He didn't connect with the chaos that I was seeing or feeling, but he was able just to love me through it. Uh, He was always supportive, never a negative word, always encouraging me to be able to get out of bed or do things for the children and letting me know that I'm doing a great job. And that's always been key in our relationship because he's always really good with his words. But at this moment, during that time, I really needed him to say it. And he was always right on time. And just knowing to take you to the doctor when you kind of hit that wall was so huge. Yes. Yes. I'm glad. And I'm glad he was there just to just to see me at my breaking point Mm -hmm. and for him to hold me because if he wasn't there, I'm not sure what today would be like because I was hiding it for so long. I was, I was this internal thing just weighing down on me and you know, it was finally released and I'm glad he was there when it did release because he was able to hold me and say, it's going to be okay. Mm Mm-hmm. And did you ever um, consider going to therapy or did you ever do that? Uh, I did consider it. I still consider it, actually. I haven't started yet. I'm still trying to make time on our schedule. It's very hard when we don't have family mm-hmm. in our in our area, but it's something that I I really want to do and I hope to do very soon. Yeah, I feel like it's so hard to make that first appointment and like the concern about whether you'll find the right person right away, you know, because you kind of sometimes have to see a few different people to find a good fit. But I did want to bring it up in case anyone's listening and in the same kind of position you were in. I think it's such a valuable thing to, to do. Oh, yes. So what other types of resources maybe either helped you through this or you've since learned about that you recommend to other women? Yes. So I started reading a lot about postpartum depression and anxiety. And one website that I use is Postpartum Progress. It has different stories of people, different moms on the journey of postpartum. And I appreciate the honesty. And then so from me reading those stories and gaining my courage to share my story as well, I write about it. I write about my postpartum depression and anxiety. And from that, a lot of moms have come to me. At first, it was like this um, secret thing. People would private message me and tell me thank you because they were dealing with the same thing. But now it's an open conversation. Everywhere I go, people ask me. People ask me how I'm doing. They tell me how they're doing. And they they ask what medicine I'm taking, who, who I'm talking to, what doctors, and about my progression. And I love it because the conversation is being had. I'd rather us talk about the conversation than the moms feeling like they're alone. Um, Now on the blog, we have eight contributors. So there's a range of conversation about lifestyles for moms. But uh, my personal story and journey is on the blog. And I talk about the different medications and the process and the progress that I've made through this journey. Great. Well, if you can um, send me over the link to some of those posts, I'll include those on the show notes page so people can find that easily. And then other than that, where's the best place for people to connect with you online? Yes. So the website is called uh, thismamawines.com, W-I-N-E-S.com. And then we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Perfect. Well, we'll link to those from the show notes page as well so everyone can find you. Is there anything else you want to share? No, I just appreciate the opportunity to share my story and to get the conversation going about postpartum depression and anxiety. It's very important in my life. So I wanted to make sure that it's talked about elsewhere. Yeah, I really appreciate you being so open with us. And now that your son is, what, 19 months old, how, how do you feel like you're doing now? I'm doing a lot better. We have connected very well. He won't leave my side. <laughs> Although it was a hard start. I, it was a good one because it, it has my eyes open and I'm aware of different things now. And I'm a better mom because I know that I'm strong. If I'm able to get through those things, I'm able to get through what else is coming my way. Definitely. Well, thank you again so much, Christine. Oh, thank you, Bryn. Now we're going to talk to Grace about Aeroflow Breast Pumps. And remember, you can go to aeroflowbreastpumps.com slash birth hour to get your breast pump for free through your insurance. Hi, Grace. Thanks for coming on the birth hour today to talk to me about Aeroflow breast pumps. Hey, I'm glad to be here. So can you remind people a little bit about yourself before we get started? 
Sure. Yeah. I um, my name is Grace Green. I live in Jackson, Mississippi, with my husband Mason and our two daughters, Nancy and Miriam. And I shared my birth story with Nancy um, a few months ago when I was still pregnant with Miriam, and so now I've got um, two girls. Awesome. And how did you first hear about Aeroflow? I actually heard about it on a Facebook group. Um, I knew that insurance was supposed to cover breast pumps, but I wasn't quite sure how to go about doing it. And somebody had mentioned Aeroflow pumps on a Facebook group. And so I just checked them out that way. So what was the process like for you? Well, it was actually really easy. Um, I think back to when I was nesting and there's a whole list of things you need to get done and like, you know, figuring out things with your insurance is probably the last one you want to do. And so it always gets pushed to the back burner. Everything else is so much more fun and straightforward to do. But I saw the, the, um, you know, the link for Airflow and I clicked on it and it took me, you know, maybe just, I mean, less than five minutes to fill out my information. I just had to put my personal information and my insurance information. And then I thought, okay, we'll, we'll see what happens. And I just submitted it. And within a couple days, somebody had, somebody called me and they said, you know, I'm, I'm your airflow breast pump specialist. Call me back. We'll get everything taken care of for you. And I really couldn't believe how easy it was. So I think, um, I might have communicated with them once over the phone, but then sent most of my e my information via email. You know, they just said we need your doctor's information to get the um, to get the prescription to send the everything, and then they um, asked me which breast pump I wanted, and then the next thing I knew, they said it was in the mail, and probably total for me it was. I would say adding up all the time I spent less than an hour were doing all that. They contacted insurance, contacted my doctor, did everything. And next thing I knew, you know, I just had a breast pump on my front step. They shipped it to me. It couldn't have been easier or more straightforward. That's amazing. And you did it while you were still pregnant? I did. I did it while I was still pregnant. So I had the breast pump. It was a, you know, a fun thing to get checked off my list and be like, oh, look, I've got this nice, shiny new breast pump and, you know, had it all ready before um, my daughter was even born. And so didn't have to think about it once she was here. And yeah, everything worked just so smoothly. I was so surprised. Probably that's the most pleasant and easy interaction I've had with insurance. It's just, um, you know, probably because I didn't have to interact yeah. with them. They did, have, they did everything for me. And so the airflow people were just real easy. There was no guessing of what to do or am I talking with the right person or where do I find this form or any of that. You know, it was just, they, they took care of everything for me. I love it. Yeah. I feel like insurance just works so much better, like business to business versus business to customer. They just don't know how to deal with individual customers or that's just not their forte because almost every interaction I have is kind of a nightmare. So I yes. love that Aeroflow is taking care of this for moms. I do too. And it was so simple just because, you know, they say, here's the list of breast pumps that you qualify for. And I just looked at those and they make it really easy. Like they have comparison charts between every breast pump. So, you know, this one has these features and this one has these features and this one has these features. So you can just look and see what you need to meet your specific needs. And then from that pick, which one you want. And I just did a little research and to figure out which breast pump I wanted. And yeah, I could, like I said, it couldn't have been easier. So which one did you end up getting? Um, I ended up getting the Spectra S2. I had heard really good things about it. And um, I thought, let, you know, let's, let's try this. I actually did a little word search in a La Le Tele group that I'm in about Spectra pumps and everybody everything on there was like, I love my Spectra pump. It works so well. You know, just everybody was raving about it. So I got that and it's been really good. I really like it. it just even little things like it's got a light on there. So if you need to pump like your baby um, right there, you can, you can, you know, and it's dark, you can do that. It's got like the timer on it. Um, and my four year old daughter likes to punch all the buttons. She thinks it's real fun. Says, can I push the other button? And I said, yeah, go ahead and push it. Oh, that's cute. Well, I'm so glad it worked out for you. And I really appreciate you sharing um, your story with us. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much again to Christine for sharing her story and to Grace for chatting with me about Aeroflow. If you're pregnant or newly had a baby and you need a breast pump, you can head over to aeroflowbreastpumps.com slash birth hour and fill out their form and they'll take care of everything for you. If you want more information from today's episode, including resources, you can head over to thebirthhour.com and search for Christine's name in the search bar.
Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, head to thebirthhour.com and click become a member to pledge your support. And as a thank you, you'll get an invitation to join our private Facebook group and access to exclusive episodes. Your vote of confidence and support means the world to me.